Hello friends and welcome to yet another video lecture on topic S1.4, more stoichiometry. Today we are focused on solutions and concentration. This is also known as molarity. Our guiding question continues to be how do we quantify matter on the atomic scale? This is our understanding for the day. And our objectives for the day, we are going to define solution, solute, and solvent. We're going to define and calculate molar concentration. We're going to represent that with a C. In our grade 10 chem classes, we use big M for molar. This is the same idea. We're going to define and calculate mass concentration, represented by the Greek letter rho. We're going to define stock and standard solutions. We'll use some of those stock solutions to calculate dilutions. And then we're going to wrap up with a little look at serial dilutions. As promised, a few definitions. A solution is a homogeneous mixture where we have one or more solutes dissolved in a solvent. Solute, the stuff getting dissolved. Solvent, the stuff doing the dissolving. The more solute there is, the more concentrated is our solution. The less solute, the more dilute is our solution. Generally, if we have more than 10% solute by mass, we're going to consider it concentrated. Less than 10% solute by mass, of course, is going to be dilute. Often our solvent in chemistry is water. It is so common, a solvent, that we actually have a state symbol for it. AQ is aqueous. So here we have a solution of glucose dissolved in water, aqueous glucose. However, water is not our only solvent. Uh, sometimes we can have gases dissolved in other gases. And here we have a representation of gases in Earth's atmosphere. Because nitrogen is the most plentiful of all the gases in the atmosphere, we consider it the solvent. And then everything else is dissolved in the nitrogen. Let's do some math with our very first formula of the day. Concentration of the solute is equal to N, which is the number of moles. N is the number of moles of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. The whole entire solution, not just the solvent. In grade 10 chem, we learned this as molarity is equal to moles divided by liters. Let's do a practice problem. Calculate the molar concentration of two moles that's our N, sodium chloride dissolved in four liters. That's our V of the solution. So again, concentration is equal to moles, two moles, divided by volume of the solution, four liters. And I'm gonna switch out my liters for a more internationally used unit of volume. So one liter is the same volume as a cube that has one decimeter edges. So if I build a cube, again, where each edge is one decimeter, one decimeter is the same thing as one tenth of a meter. It is also 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters. So if I take this cube and volume is length times width times height, volume is going to be one decimeter times one decimeter times one decimeter. That's one decimeter to the third power, which is totally one decimeter cubed. So instead of using liter, we're going to use cubic decimeters, decimeter cubed. Same thing as a liter, just a different unit. So now I can finally do my math. 2 divided by 4 is 0.5, but I need to keep two sig figs, so 0.5 is not sufficient. It needs to be 0.50. We could throw a zero in front of there. So my unit label, in grade 10 chem, we use big M for molar, but here I'm going to keep my moles and I'm also going to keep my cubic decimeters. But this doesn't make any sense because this is in the denominator. To show that it's in the denominator, I'm going to use a negative three. That negative in the numerator means that it actually is supposed to be in the denominator. So here I have moles per cubic decimeter, which is the same thing as moles per liter, which is the same thing as molar. So this is my concentration, 0.50 moles per cubic decimeter. We can show that by putting NaCl into square brackets. This is our shortcut for saying I'm talking about the concentration of something. So that will be equal to 0.50 moles per cubic decimeter. Let's do just one more problem with this formula. We're going to calculate the molar concentration of 0.0030 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in four liters of solution. 
super similar to the last problem, except I've got grams, and we definitely need moles for this formula. So we're going to convert our grams of sodium chloride into moles of sodium chloride. We do that using the molar mass from the periodic table. We find sodium, it's 22.99, plus chlorine is 35.45. Add those together, we get 58.44 grams per mole. Our grams, top and bottom, are going to cancel out. We're going to do our division, 0 0.0030 times 1 divided by 58.44 gives us a grand total of 5.133. Lots of digits times 10 to the minus 5. I'm going to go ahead and keep all of these digits in my calculator because we don't do sig figs until the very end of the problem. We're going to take these moles, we finally have moles, and divide it by the volume of the solution. Our volume is once again 4, and again, I'm going to use my cubic decimeters, not liters. So in my calculator, 5.133 times all of those digits divided by 4.0 is going to give us 1.2833. Lots of digits times 10 to the minus 5. So now we can do a sig fig check. I've got 1, 2 sig figs here. I've got 1, 2 sig figs here. That means that 2 is my least number of sig figs, and so I'm going to keep 2. That 8 is going to turn that 2 into a 3. And so the concentration of my sodium chloride solution here is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per cubic decimeter. That's a really big, well, small, rather, <laughs> negative exponent. I don't like it. So what we can do instead of using moles is I can use millimoles. Just like there's 1,000 millimeters in one meter, there's 1,000 millimoles in a mole. And so I can take this number and multiply it by 1,000 to convert to millimoles. And so my concentration could also be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2 millimoles per cubic decimeter. I still have a negative exponent, so I could go one more time. There are 1,000 micromoles in one millimole. So I can multiply by 1,000 one more time, and I can get 130 micromoles per cubic decimeter, and then I don't have messy negative exponents, if that makes you happy. This formula of ours is kind of sort of given to us in section one of the data booklet, right there. Not an exact match, but if I do some algebra, if I multiply both sides by V, to get my V and the denominator to cancel out, then the number of moles, there she is, is equal to concentration times volume, concentration times volume. We're going to use that version to solve this problem, calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid dissolved in 250 cubic centimeter solution, where the concentration, remember that that means concentration, is 1.50 moles per cubic decimeter. What in the world is a cubic centimeter? It's the same thing as a mil. So one milliliter is equal to the volume of a cube that has edges of one centimeter. So if I multiply one centimeter by one centimeter times one centimeter, when I say that volume is equal to length times width times height, then I get one centimeter times itself three times is one cubic centimeter. And that is the same thing as one milliliter. If you like to watch doctor shows, Sometimes the actors will be shouting about, I need 17 cc's of epinephrine. What is a cc? It's a cubic centimeter. So cubic centimeter, also centimeter to the third power, is a cc, cc of epinephrine. One cubic centimeter, one cc, one milliliter, all the same things. So anyhow, that's a milliliter. Um, let's use our formula. N is equal to CV, the number of moles is equal to the concentration, 1.50 moles dm minus 3 times the volume, 250 cm3. Oh no, those are not a match. I need to make these units match so that I can cancel them out to keep just the moles because that's what we're trying to find. So how do I convert cm3 to dm3? Well, just like there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, there's also 1,000 cubic centimeters in one decimeter cubed. Do you want proof? One decimeter is equal to 10 centimeters. So if I cube both sides, 
I get one times one times one is one cubic decimeter is 10 times 10 times 10. Oh yeah, it's 1000 cubic centimeters. So I'm going to convert my 250 centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. And there are 1000 centimeters cubed and one decimeter cubed. And so three zeros in the denominator simply means we're going to move our decimal place backwards. One, two, three, we're going to get 0 0.250. Actually, that's not a sig fig, so we're going to keep just 0.25 DM3s because CM3s top and bottom cancel out. Back to our formula. The number of moles is now equal to 1.50 moles. DM negative 3 times 0.25 C. Oh, DM3. Sorry, we converted those. Um, notice that my DM to the negative 3 and my CM to the positive 3, these guys are going to cancel out. If I had x to the negative 3 and I multiplied it by x to the positive 3, that's the same thing as x cubed over x cubed, which is totally the same thing as 1. That's what happens here. DM to the minus 3 and DM to the positive 3 cancel each other out. That means that my unit label left is moles, which is exactly what we're trying to find. Calculator time. 1.50 times 0.25 is going to give us 0.375, but we're going to check our sig figs. I get to keep only two, so that five is going to turn that seven into an eight, my final answer. There are 0.38 moles of H2SO4 dissolved in this solution. We most often talk about molar concentration, but sometimes we also have this idea of mass concentration. Instead of having moles, we have mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. And instead of using C, we're going to use the Greek letter rho. We're still looking at concentration kind of sorta, but the mass concentration. This one's so easy because I don't need moles. Literally, it's just going to be 0 0.0030 grams. Keep the grams divided by those four. Again, we like decimeters a little bit better. And so then when we do this division, 0 0.0030 grams divided by four cubic decimeters, which is the same thing as a liter, we're going to get 7.5 times 10 to the minus four grams per cubic decimeter. Easy peasy. Pay attention, is your question asking for molar concentration or mass concentration? Molar concentration will be moles on the top, mass concentration will be mass on the top. When we buy sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid, other stuff from the chemical supply store, we often will buy super concentrated versions of them because we don't want to pay to ship a bunch of water. And so these highly concentrated versions are going to be called our stock solutions. And then we use them in dilutions to make all the other various concentrated solutions that we need for our labs. This is our dilution formula. It is not given to you in the data booklet. You should memorize it. I use this formula more than any other one in my whole entire life. Love it, know it, memorize it. The concentration of solution number one times the volume of solution number one is equal to the concentration of solution number two times the volume of solution number two. Let's apply to this problem. 100 cubic centimeters of solution prepared using 10 cubic centimeters of six mole per cubic decimeter stock solution. We're going to calculate the molar concentration of this diluted hydrochloric acid. So this is my unknown concentration. This is the volume of that unknown concentration. Here is my volume of my known concentration. We could totally make these guys both the twos and these guys the ones. It doesn't really matter as long as you keep them paired together the right way. Let's solve C1 times 100. Ooh, I lost my decimal place. Cubic centimeters is equal to six moles per cubic decimeter times 10 centimeters cubed. So you might be thinking, oh wait, we must convert our centimeter cubed to decimeter cubed, but we don't actually have to, because what we're going to do to solve for C1 is divide both sides by this 100 cubic centimeters. 
And guess what happens when I divide cubic centimeters by cubic centimeters? They cancel out. So we don't actually have to convert because they're going to go away anyhow. So what are we left with? Concentration is equal to 6 times 10 divided by 100. That's 60 divided by 100. That's 0 0.6. I'm going to keep another decimal place because I need two sig figs. What unit label do I have left? That's it. Moles per cubic decimeter. That's so good because what am I trying to find? Concentration. This is my concentration of this diluted hydrochloric acid. The glassware that we're going to use to do this is called a volumetric flask. It's a volumetric flask. And what we do is we never put water into acid. We always put acid into water. And so I'm going to fill up a little bit of my volumetric flask with some distilled water. And then we're going to add in our 10 cubic centimeters of our six mole per cubic decimeter acid. So we're going to add that in, drip her right in. It's going to get warm. Um, so definitely be doing this in a fume hood just to be safe. And then we're going to add some more water up to this line. This is the only graduation in this whole entire volumetric flask. It is going to make 100 cubic centimeters of our solution. Drop in a stir bar, mix her up super good, and we will have our 0 0.60 mole per cubic decimeter solution of hydrochloric acid. Let's say that I have this solution that's super concentrated, 10 moles per cubic decimeter, and I take one cubic centimeter, one milliliter out of it, and I add it to this test tube, and I add nine cubic centimeters of water. So now it's one-tenth the concentration of this one. I diluted it by a tenth. So this one's concentration is now one. What if I take one milliliter out of this one and I add it to another test tube and add nine milliliters, nine cubic centimeters. So now this one is a tenth of that one. It's going to be 0.1 moles per cubic decimeter. If I do it again, I have diluted by another tenth, 0.01 moles per cubic decimeter. This is known as a serial dilution because I'm doing this dilution in series where I'm taking a little bit out of this one to make that one and then out of that one to make the next one, out of this one to make the next one dilutions in series. We can see the change in color as the serial dilution occurs. It gets more and more faded because there's less and less of a concentrated solution in the test tubes. What's super cool is that we can actually measure this color of the solutions with a device known as a spectrophotometer. In our lab, we have um, simpler versions of this called colorimeters. Similar, a little bit different, but similar. What happens in a spectrophotometer is we put our sample into the machine, light gets shined through. If I have a lot of color, like this one, in my solution, then a lot of that light is going to be absorbed by the color. Very little passes through. And so this is going to have a high absorbance. It's going to have a low transmittance. But if I have a solution like this one that has just the littlest bit of color, when I shine my light through it, most of it is going to go straight on through. It's going to have a high transmittance, a low absorbance. Our machine actually detects how much light is transmitted through the sample and then spits out a number equal to that transmittance. And then I can figure out just how much color how concentrated is my solution by looking at how much light is absorbed by my sample. And on that note, my friends, we have accomplished our guiding question, quantifying matter on the atomic scale. We defined solution, solute, and solvent. We talked about molar concentrations and mass concentrations. We defined stock and standard solution. Standard, we just know what its concentration is. We calculated concentration from dilution, memorized that formula C1V1 equals C2V2. We talked about those super cool serial dilutions. Great work today.